Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Good morning. Welcome back, squad. Welcome back to the channel and my adventures in a very cold and wintry Finland with the new Porsche Cayenne S. Now, I've already driven the car, so today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different, something that is very, very important to us petrol heads, to you and to I, about the cars that we love. So engines like that in this car, the V6, the bi-turbo V6, and especially the engine in my Porsche 911 GT3 that revs up to 9,000 RPM. Well, they require lubrication. They require engine oil to make that possible. And you're probably familiar with something a little bit like this, a four liter bottle or can of oil from Mobile One. But what you probably don't know is where that comes from and how it starts out. And in particular, take a look at this. That is base oil. It's a clear liquid. I had no idea about that before. So today we're going to be taking a look at the making of Mobile One here at the Exxon Mobil lubricants plant in Nantali, Finland. So let's head inside and take a look. I had a great drive over from Helsinki, the capital of Finland, to Nantali, where we are now. But before we go inside, I want to rewind, take a step back, go back to basics and talk about why engine oil is as important as I'm making out. So to do so, let's just jump in and open up the bonnet and have a look at the engine in the new generation KNS. So this car has a 2.9 litre bi-turbo V6, twin turbocharged. It has 440 horsepower, 550 newton meters of torque and the engine is right under here now you can't actually see too much but engines of course have many moving components moving components create friction which creates heat which is inefficient so it is vital to have an engine oil that can reduce that friction and allow maximum efficiency to get the power out of the engine and it's made right here the base oils arrive at the plant here and they are converted into the engine oil used in cars exactly like this one so let's head inside I'll need to gear up of course protective safety gear and we'll take a look around welcome to the plant that we are going to be taking a look around and firstly I'm just gonna spin the camera back so you can see that I am suited and booted in my safety gear but a quick introduction to what happens here so over 80 million liters of oils arrive per year we're by the sea so a vessel comes once a month bringing oils in all sorts of different base oils from around Europe that's then stored in the ginormous tanks that you can see around me there are over 40 tanks and the largest ones here take two and a half million liters each we're gonna see the process and how that all connects but the snake of pipes from all of these different tanks that leads into the main plant is just crazy we're gonna see that too so let's continue and head inside. There are two simultaneous parts though, of course the oil itself and where that actually arrives, but also the packaging, which is a huge operation. You can see I'm surrounded by the four litre uh, bottles and cans here, of which they produce over a million a year of the four litre variant. Also one litres, 20 litres, also the barrels which have over 200 litres. So these all have to arrive literally just on time. It's quite, I guess, similar uh, in a way to being at a car factory and seeing all the components arriving online at the exact moment they're needed. These arrive by truck, they're taken away and stored in a warehouse, which is as large as five football fields in nearby Turku. So those arrive, they're taken up through here. You can see the final product is going over the top there. Very much the full factory operation, but let's head back along the line a little bit to where the packaging or filling happens. This is slightly in reverse order, so I'm gonna to jump to the other end. How cool is the way those boxes are folded? I've not seen anything like that before. 
but this is where we're coming down towards where the oils arrive and really the most visual I think part of this as we go past an awful lot of bottle tops coming through here you can literally see the oils being piped and filled four liters per container per carton of the mobile one zero w40 there's a rating system to dictate which oils are used for which cars but they're weight measured so those are scales down at the bottom to ensure that everyone has exactly the same and meets the requirements i just find it mesmerizing to watch this the way they come around they're filled up the bottles are taken around the lids are screwed on just there then they come out through this side um, a long line on a conveyor belt. I'm going to skip the background slightly where they're sorted into different avenues. We come down here further through the line. And here they get grouped, grouped together in the different containers. This is actually really quite fun to watch. And then we get the stage of them all being boxed up and sent to wherever in the world they're going to go. From here, I've always been mesmerized by complicated logistics and transportation and the way they load, they go all the way up here, over the top, past the Mobile One logo up there, taken through to the other room to packaging, which we'll see as well shortly. But we've actually not really covered the other side of this process. What actually goes into the oil itself? How is that made? I'm inside what's called the snake pit and the reason for that is that you have all of the different nozzles and hoses that are used to direct oils from the different tanks so they're all pumped through here and you have a crazy number of different pipes this is actually fascinating as a logistical operation to make it all work and make sure everything goes to the right place there are two different processes by which the oils can be blended. You have batch blending as with Mobile One, or you have continuous blending with inline injection. But I am standing right underneath the batch blending kettles right here. So the additives are pumped in, the oils, the base oils are pumped in, they're mixed together with heat, and ultimately you result with the product that you've seen being filled into the bottles. But I suspect it's a rather more complicated chemical formula to make it work than that initially seems. However, you can see also that we are right by the sea here where the vessel arrives and all of the oils come into this crazy complicated maze. If you had asked me before today, I would have said that natural oil was brown. I did not realize that the brown coloring that we're familiar with from engine oil actually comes through the additives rather than through the base oil itself. But I am mesmerized, absolutely mesmerized, watching this in action. You can see the empty bottles arriving on the track above us. They go around the loop before coming down this way, lined up here in order before the stickers and packaging is applied. Obviously something very important. Then they continue down and around before they get to where they're filled. Another bit that's fun to watch, the completed boxes come down at this lift through to this side where they are grouped up and loaded onto pallets. So they're sorted and filtered and I find the mechanics of all of the equipment really to do this quite intriguing to explore and look at and the way they're turned around there and then lined up before they get wrapped on the other side. Your 32 boxes, each of four times four liters, so somebody can calculate exactly how many liters of Mobile One that is, come along here on the pallet, I think to probably my favorite part of this, watch what's about to happen. Away it goes, the wrapping, the cling filming. <laughs> if only wrapping Christmas presents was that easy. they go to be shipped somewhere in the world for some cars engines check the view from on top of the tank so you can see over the whole plant from up here and just how many oils are stored in these different tanks and also if I spin around this way down here on this side is the lab the laboratory where all of the samples that are taken during the filling process are all tested to ensure they meet requirements all down in there you can imagine there's quite a strict testing process to make sure everything is completely correct back down but here's a quick question for you guys this concrete wall that you can see going all the way around. It goes in the background, around the back of everything and around the bottom of the tanks. What do you think that's for? I'm gonna tell you a little bit later on. What do you think that is about? If you're wondering how the samples get here, this is a pressurized tube that runs all the way from where the blenders were that we saw earlier, past the tanks and comes in here with a sample delivered straight away to be run through the different testing machines and computers that line up the laboratory, all of which is definitely far too complicated for me to fully understand. 
Well, that brings us to an end of this part of today's adventure, but I realize I've left you on a little bit of a cliffhanger about those concrete walls. So let me explain if you haven't already been able to guess. If the largest tank that is in there were to leak, obviously that should never happen, but if it was, it would become a giant swimming pool. It is built just to the height that it would all be contained inside and not allowed to leak out. So there we go. Anyway, a very interesting visit for me, a little bit different, but obviously the engine oil is so critical to the videos that I'm shooting every single day and the cars that I'm driving and enjoying those engines and exhaust noises, especially in cars like the GT3. But for now, I'm gonna jump back into the KN. I'm gonna be heading back over to Helsinki. So let's jump in the car, warm up a little bit because it's freezing here and head over to Porsche. It's a gentle cruise back about two hours taking the motorway this time on the journey here. I went a little bit more exploratory in the route I chose, so via some amazing locations and just some interesting roads to drive the car a little bit more. So you'll have to watch that video if you'd like to know about the new KNS. But it cruises along very nicely, adaptive cruise control naturally, lane departure warning, so if you start straying it will vibrate away at you and all that kind of creature comforts inside the car. But generally just quite relaxing. We've still got the studded tyres on the car as well, so there's a bit more noise interesting for me driving in a snowy environment like that. But a uh, gentle drive really back towards Helsinki to return the car and then catch the flight later on after this little adventure. And here we are then, back at the Porsche Center Helsinki. All done then, back where we started about 500 kilometers later. I've had some good usage out of the new KN. As you can see, it is a little bit dirtier as well than when this journey commenced, but that's the purpose of an SUV. That's why we used this car for this adventure, the making of Mobile One. So a big thanks to them as well for hosting me at the factory. Interesting to see something a little bit different to the norm for me. And also, of course, to Porsche for the opportunity to drive in the new KN as well. So check out that video if you haven't already. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for there. Thank you very much for following this little trip with me, guys. I really appreciate your support, and I will be sure to see you again very, very soon. Cheers!